In this article, we'll take a look at creating widgets and menus in WordPress themes. We'll start with uh, where we left off in our previous video, this very ugly looking website, and our task, our first task, is to plop a sidebar right in here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll actually make that a bit wider just so we can see what's going on. So let's just search for sidebar, there we go, and make that 300 pixels, and then make sure that the content is also pushed by that amount. There we go. So we have a nice little sidebar here. I think it might also look a bit nicer if the content is pushed a bit more off. There we go. So the way I like to do it is usually to go to the header file where our sidebar is. Here's the sidebar content and use instead of this code right here, use get sidebar. This is a built in WordPress function. And basically what it does is it loads just a simple file named sidebar.php. Put the content right in there. All right. So hopefully if we reload the site now, you won't see any difference. There we go. All right, that's it. Now we're going to define a sidebar. In WordPress, you'll use the functions.php file to define sidebars for yourself. I'll just use the same code as I used in the article itself. There we go. So quick explanation here. Uh, we should probably rename this awesome theme widget areas. So we're going to define a widget area or multiple widget areas here if we want using the register sidebar function. The register sidebar function takes a number of parameters. Um, here I've given it a name, theme sidebar. Let's give it an ID of awesome theme sidebar. And give it a little description in our awesome theme. That's fine. Now, here in the before and after and widget title and areas, um, you see here that there are these special characters. Um, WordPress uses these to actually add an ID and a widget class. Um, I'll show that to you once we've actually added some widgets. But for now, the main thing is that WordPress knows about this widget area. And if you actually go to the admin, nope, sorry. You should see the widget section pop up and see our theme sidebar here. So let's add some things like an archive, um, perhaps category list. Let's add a, I don't think actually that'll be enough. Let's give it a meta as well. There we go, let's save those. And we should see nothing. Because we haven't told WordPress where to actually display this theme sidebar, we know where we want it, but WordPress doesn't. So we'll need to go to our sidebar.php file and we'll need to add some special code here. Now it's pretty easy because what you basically need is a function called the dynamic sidebar. It's called dynamic sidebar, not the dynamic sidebar. And you need to give it the, the widget area location, which we should have in our functions.php file we need this ID. There we go. So once that's done, we could actually just go back to our website and take a look. There we go. It's a bit ugly, but you can see that WordPress has already added all the information we need. So we have the widget titles and we have the widget content. Let's give this a tiny bit of CSS just so we can see what's going on. And before we do that, take a look at the LI here. Let me copy that out. Go to the functions file, there we go. So this is the contents of a widget. What we're looking at is basically this. So as you can see, this character here corresponds to the actual widget ID. WordPress will calculate this for you because this is an archive widget, but it, it also gives it a little ID number, which may be different because there might be multiple instances of archive widgets within the same sidebar, or there may be multiple sidebars with different archive widgets in it. Um, you can also see the classes being added widget is the class that we basically hard coded in and then we've told WordPress to add the class for that widget which is widget underscore archive so you can see all that in action all right now if we take a look at the classes here um, whoops sorry about that. you can see that we have this big ID of site sidebar and then we have this widget title so let's make sure that these widget titles look a bit nicer Let's 
So yeah, that will look we're getting there also. Um, you might also want to do the following. I think that well, yep, widget will be displayed as list as you can see. But there's actually no there we go. Here allies, but there's actually no opening and closing list. So what you'll need to do is either add a list here, like that, to make sure that the widgets themselves are properly uh, nested elements of a list. Or we could just make this a list, which will be a lot easier. There we go. Okay, so that will be proper CSS and HTML. Sorry, that will be proper HTML now. So what we need to do is take a look at the classes that we have in here and the IDs. Let's see. So this is the site sidebar, fair enough, there we go. So we'll make sure that any allies, which are direct descendants of this class, sorry, this uh, list, site sidebar, um, should be um, list style type, none. That will remove those little disks from there, there we go. We could make all the widgets bit smaller. It might be a bit too small. Never mind for now. We'll give all widgets a margin bottom of 22 pixels. There we go. We could also make all links in there, especially if they're in new, uh, lists. We can make them um, color. Decoration none. And then if you hover over them, we can make them a different color. Or we could just underline them. There we go. Yeah, that's not that nice, but it'll do. Let's just make the titles actually a lot darker. There we go to make them stand out a bit. Okay, so as you can see, again, not super beautiful, but you can understand the mechanics of it. So you, all you need to do is register your widgets here in the functions file, then make sure that a widget is built in the admin, and then use the dynamic sidebar function in your sidebar file to output the widget, uh, sorry, to output the widget area that you want. All right, so that's actually it for widgets. Um, making this nice is basically CSS from now on, um, and that's actually pretty easy. It's just a matter of figuring out what design you'd like. So on to menus. Uh, menus follow a very similar logic um, you'll need to register your menu, you'll need to find a place to put it, and then use some CSS to out, uh, sorry, to change the, um, the style. So let's start by registering our menus. We'll use the register nav menus function. Let's go to our functions file. Register nav menus. Header menu, for our awesome header menu, that'll be fine. So what you'll see here is you'll see the menus options pop up, and you can add a uh, menu to our awesome Men, uh, header menu. There we go. So let's create a new menu. And let's add some pages to it. About page, blog, and home. That'll do for now. So add. Let's rearrange this a bit. There we go. Save menu. And let's make sure that it displays in our theme location. Okay, so we've gone through actually step one and two. Um, we've added, we've registered a menu and made sure that we actually have a menu created in that slot. Now we'll need a place in the HTML to put it. So let's put it underneath our site title, which should be in our header.php file. Here's the site title, nav menu, header menu. I think that's our location. Um, header menu, yes. There we go. So now if we look at our website, we should have an ugly old menu over here. Now again, let's add some CSS. Let's look at the classes and IDs and stuff. There we go. So we have main menu container. There we go. Now I don't really like to rely on these. Um, you can set these up inside within the function as parameters, but to make our lives easier, let's actually wrap an element around this. ID and equals site menu. Again, not super good practice, but um, this is the simplest way to understand the system. And then once you get a bit better at it, you can play around within the parameters of this function. So let's make sure that the site menu is aligned center. There we go. 
that will already be much better. There we go. We should also make sure that any list elements are displayed in line block, which we'll put them next to each other. There we go. We can also make sure that these list, uh, sorry, these links are kind of text color. None. And when you hover over them, they get that text decoration. There we go. There we go. See? Okay, we can also make this a lot nicer by adding a lot more CSS. Um, obviously, the paddings and stuff here are horrible, um, but I think it's very obvious how this can take shape. Um, it's also important to note that you can put menus and sidebars anywhere. So you could have another menu here. I'm oh, sorry, at the bottom of the page. You could have the same menu here. You could have a different menu. You could have a widget section over here. So once you know the mechanics of this, it's really up to you and your CSS chops to put these in place.